I got a question on Twitter asking, is this 1929? Should I sell everything and flee to the hills? The good news is it's going to take a lot more. The 1929 stock crash and 1930 bank failures were only the first of a long series of catastrophic policy choices. The bad news is politicians have learned nothing, and some are already reaching for that 1930s arsenic. Now, for those who don't remember, the 1930s were the worst economic crisis in the U.S. in the past 100 years. Of course, America's been through much worse, such as the revolutionary era hyperinflation, when Congress made a law that refusing continental dollars was punishable by having your ears cut off, or the colonial era New York law that said nobody can sell anything except at a government store, punishable by death. So yes, governments like killing you, or at least cutting off your body parts. Still, while no ears were harmed in the 1930s, it was very bad. Uh, industrial production fell by half, unemployment hit 25%, stocks fell by 90%. Stockbrokers really did throw themselves out of skyscrapers, which is the wrong way to fix Wall Street. So it's worth asking what got us to the 1930s. Now, it kicked off with a stock market crash in 1929 caused by interest rate hikes, which will sound familiar, uh, followed by a series of major bank crashes. But we had seen that before, and it was fiery, but mostly peaceful. The 1920 depression, for example, started with a stock crash, bank collapses, then deflation and 12% unemployment. But by the next year, it was all over. Why? Because the government did nothing. In fact, the government did exactly what it's not supposed to do today, cut spending, balance the budget, did not cut rates to quote unquote, stimulate the economy. Government did nothing and we bounced right back. We had no such luck in 1929 because the very same Herbert Hoover, who as 1920 Secretary of Commerce had been fighting vociferously for government intervention, was now president. This time he went to town, massively raising spending for everything in sight, relief, infrastructure, hiking tariffs, threatening businesses who cut wages to survive. Now keep in mind, prices had already fallen 25%, so he was effectively commanding companies to pay one third more when customers were not buying. So assisted suicide, courtesy of Uncle Sam. Of course, all this made it worse, so FDR beat Hoover in the next election, promising the exact opposite. Sadly, FDR lied and immediately went to Hoover on steroids, again going after companies for lowering wages, handing out billions in relief and freebies to every industry or agricultural interest in the country, mandating worker benefits, ultimately taking over the entire economy, the so-called New Deal. Of course, as in the Soviet Union, it turns out governments are very bad at running economies, and so the depression dragged on for nearly a decade, saved only when FDR finally stopped attacking business because he needed them to make weapons for World War II. So yes, we have the ingredients for a major crisis, inflation, recession, bank crashes, but the real risk lies in how government breaks the productive economy in response. Politicians like Elizabeth Warren are already pushing the Hoover FDR agenda, and this administration is unfortunately all ears. If that gains steam, then it could be time to head for the hills. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.